Okay, so, um, the text is taken from the book of First Kings chapter 18. We've been looking at how God turned the hearts of the entire nation back to himself, the nation of Israel. They had veered away from God. They had strayed from God. And because they strayed from God and opened the door to idolatry, almost every other evil became resident in the land. The privation of all sorts, hunger, famine, deaths, all kinds of things. And eventually God sent his servant Elijah to turn their hearts back to him. And how did he do that? By an encounter with the prophets of Baal. And so they gathered together on one side and we are told to call upon their God and Elijah was also supposed to call on his God and whichever one answered will be the true God that the Jews will worship thereafter. And of course, we know what happened when the prophets of Baal, about 450 of them, called upon their God. Elijah turned into mockery because their God didn't answer. When the true God shows up, the fake ones bow. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I say, when the true God shows up, the fake one bows. And you as an individual, as a person, that is part of your responsibility to demonstrate God here on earth in words, but also in deeds. I remember many years ago, it was in the month of January, the year 1989. I was coming from church with a few of my friends. We got to Yaba Busta. We are coming from Akoka, going to Ikeja. Got to Yaba Bus Stop. And then we saw a crowd of people gathered somewhere. And one of us signaled that we should go and disrupt the activity. And so we went there and saw what we were doing. The man was performing magic, real magic, voodoo. Was mesmerizing them. So there was a whole lot of crowd gathered there. And then we took position, just, you know, strategically placed ourselves in the midst of the crowd and began to pray in the spirit. And while we were praying in the spirit, obviously, his activity was interrupted. He felt it, and then he stopped what he was doing, began to look around to see the people responsible. And then he saw me, you know, just muttering in tongues. God must have led him to locate me because he located the right person. And so he called me out. Now, remember, this was 89. I was probably 19 plus, not yet 20, and it was January. He called me out to the center, and I excitedly walked out and the crowd were wondering what, what's going what's to happen here or what's about to happen and he brought a pot he said if you are not afraid take this thing from this pot because he, he now became confrontational he knew that we were trying to disrupt his activity so he wanted to prove that he, he had superior power so maybe if I picked it, something may happen. And so I put my hand, picked the stuff, showed the crowd, and I threw it away. So, a few seconds, I waited for something to happen. Nothing happened. By this time, the crowd had shifted back. They had 
you know, like, in case anything, everybody can take off easily and claim not to have witnessed anything. <laughs> so, the next thing, he took, a, he took one charm from another pot and was coming to hit me. He got to about a meter or two meters away from where I, I stood. But I didn't move. I stood still. And he couldn't move. He was stuck to the ground. The power of God got him grounded to the ground. He couldn't move. By this time, people were already shouting, Jesus, Jesus. And then the next thing was that he took a big pot where he had the snake he was using to play, to mesmerize them. And so, while he was going to put his hand in the pot, one of the other guys told him, if you touch that snake, that's one of my friends. He said, if you touch that snake to bite you, don't. Because the power had been broken. So as soon as he put his hand, the snake jumped at him. He ran back. So at this time, he knew that he had been disarmed. The crowd knew that he had been disarmed. And Jesus had taken the center stage. Without any prompting, people began to sing. It became a crusade. Because they are, I mean, by this time, the crowd had doubled. So there was more than enough crowd. And then because the crowd was so much, one person's voice couldn't cover, we split the crowd into different groups. And we ministered to them. Many of them gave their life to Christ. Eventually, before I left, the man came to me and began to plead with me in Igbo and said, listen, my brother, one name, <laughs> you know this thing, I'm doing his business. Say, why, why did you come to spoil my business? Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I said that to corroborate what I'm saying from the scripture. You, as a child of God, you are God's agent of change here. You are God's instrument to announce his praise. There is always a conflict between light and darkness. There is always an ongoing, and it will continue until Christ Jesus comes, and then there is a new earth and there is a new heaven. But until then, you are the instrument that God is counting on. God is not going to send angels to do certain things. And the reality is that most often than none, you know, while a lot of people operate under physical or natural inferiority complex, there's also spiritual inferiority complex where we don't think in code that we've got what it takes. Can you imagine this? We are eight teenagers. These were teenagers. They were not pastors. These were teenagers who confronted darkness. These were teenagers. So, so sometimes I try to bring back those stories to let you know that whatever I do here as a pastor, it's not because I'm a pastor. It's not because I'm a pastor. It's simply because I'm a child of God. And if you are a child of God, you can do the same even far much more. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So never shy away. Never shy away when, when the responsibility is placed on you, either accidentally or intentionally, to demonstrate or to announce Jesus. Never shy away. At that point in time, it's not about you anymore. It's not about you. David ran towards Goliath. And told him, say, listen, I'm going to give your head to the fowl of the air. His motivation was, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? To defy the army of God. That was his motivation. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You see, in the realm of the spirit, faith is paramount. And faith means I trust God enough. Not presumption. I believe in God's word enough. And I know that God will not fail. I know that God is supreme. 
Glory to Jesus. Fear and faith works almost the same way, but they are parallel. Fear attracts the very object that it's afraid of. Faith also attracts whatever it's focused on. So they both have attractional power. So it now depends on which one is functioning in your life at a time. Okay, so let's get back. So that, this was the encounter. And of course, eventually, we saw what happened. Um, Elijah repaired the altar. That was the first thing that happened. He repaired the altar that was broken. And then he called upon God. God answered. And God didn't only answer, but he answered by fire. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Bible says in verse 38, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice. And then in verse 40, and Elijah said to them, seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them and Elijah brought them down to the brook of, to the brook Kishon and executed them there. And Elijah said to Ahab, go up and eat and drink for there is the sound of the abundance of rain. Glory to Jesus. Now, before, before, before there was a sound of the abundance of rain, before there was any sign that the tide had turned, the first thing that happened was they repaired the altar and after repairing the altar, the fire of God then fell on the altar. That was the first thing. So repairing the altar must precede the sound of abundance. And the sound of abundance is just a sound. It's just a sound. Sadly, that's where many people stop. When they hear the sound, they just begin to jump and celebrate. Hello, hello, hello. Um, the sound can keep sounding for eternity. Glory to Jesus. Oh, I, I sense there is a breakthrough about to come. Don't just sense. When you sense, then go into action. Take the best position. Glory to Jesus. That's what happened here. He said, he said there is a sound of the abundance of rain. But it didn't stop there. What was the next thing that happened? So Ahab went up to eat and drink and Elijah went up to the top of Camel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. Give me the New Living Translation of that verse quickly. So Ahab went, so Ahab went to eat and drink. But Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Camel and bowed, bowed, bowed low to the ground and prayed with his face between his knees. When he heard the sound of the abundance of rain. The next thing he did was to take prayer position. Every time you say that there is a move of God that is about to break loose or there is a tide that is about to turn, the next thing you must do, you are expected to take a bad position. Glory to Jesus. For the Bible says that as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth. There is no bringing forth without traveling. And the fact that there was a sound or there is a sound of the abundance of rain doesn't necessarily mean the rain will fall. Is it not true in the natural? Is it not true in the natural? Sometimes you can just hear, you know, thunders and, you know, and everybody's running helter skelter. Like somebody say, helter skelter. <laughs> that customer. Okay. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then people take cover. And they are waiting. Five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes. Lo and behold, there's no rain. And sometimes it even comes with thick cloud. That's why, the, you know, sometimes you talk about cloud without rain. Cloud without rain. That's an abortive miracle. Aborted breakthrough. Because there was a sound and people 
who are not spiritually discerning enough. Or we are not skilled in spiritual activities or operations. They didn't know what to do. When you hear a sound like that, you, you not only take a bad position, depending on how serious you are, you go into fasting and prayer and praises. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Because there's, that's an indication from God that there's a process ongoing. Something is about to be pushed out from the womb of the spirit. You now have a responsibility to give strength to it. Didn't you hear the cry of the prophet that the children have come to bed but there's no strength to bring forth? The children have come to bed, no strength. So, 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 a couple of people and a couple of, you know, organizations have come to that point several times when in the realm of the spirit there was a signal. Their time had come. They just didn't know what to do. And they let it slip away. And when he sleeps away like that, sometimes you have to wait another cycle. And cycles, depend on what it is, a cycle sometimes can just be a year. As the, when it's very short. Sometimes it can be three years. Sometimes it can be seven. And sometimes it can be 20. Carelessness. Ignorance sometimes. Because they are not aware of what needs to be done. But Elijah knew what to do. He was the one who had the sound in the spirit. The, the, the air, the heavens have been cleared. All the pollutions and contaminations limiting or militating against the power of God have been removed. All the impurities have been removed. The altar was clean. The fire of God had come down. The atmosphere was purified. And then the next, he began to hear the sound. He began to hear the sound. Which means in the spirit, the rain was already falling. In the spirit realm, the rain was falling. But, but it wasn't so yet in the physical. And then when he perceived it, they saw Ahab went to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of the mountain, come here, and bowed low to the ground and prayed with his face between his knees. It's not a, a, a one day prayer. So let me just know. Shaba, 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 shaba. Skin to live. No, 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 no. No, no, no. It's the kind of prayer you make up your mind. It, that's the kind of prayer that God himself prescribed. You know, God gave a prescription for this kind of moment. Give me Isaiah 62, verse 6. He gave a prescription. All Jerusalem have posted watchmen on your walls. They will pray day and night continually. Take no rest. Or you pray to the Lord. Verse 7. Give the Lord no rest until he completes his work. Until he makes Jerusalem the pride of the earth. He said you will take no rest. He said you will give him no rest until he completes it. The work has started but it's not complete yet. It's not complete yet. It, it's, like, it's, like, it's like as a church in this season, God forbid evil. If we just suddenly... Go to rest. Say, ah, we have seen. Ah, booyakata. It's a kairos moment. You are not sensitive. Be sensitive. It's a kairos moment. He said, give the Lord no rest until he completes his work. There is a work the Lord has set in motion. There is a, there's something ongoing in the spirit. So God is saying, listen, this is how to, this is how to, 
to, to do it. This is what you do in seasons or in moments like this. You say, give me no rest and you take no rest until my work is complete. Until my work. So it's not the kind of prayer you it's not the kind of prayer you just, you know, just one day this is this is the kind of prayer you fold your sleeves you do what God said to do give him no rest take no rest until you see until you see or somebody could be about your business somebody could be about your entire destiny as a whole or somebody could be that there have been a siege they have been experiencing for a while but you just sense that something is about to break that is not when to go to a party that's not when to go to a party i mean it's some sometimes i see believers do certain things that are so and i'm wondering even if you are not sensing this we can't you I mean, there are some things that you should just know. I don't, maybe I'm over. I'm over, I mean, because, well, I don't know what to say. But there are some things God taught me very early as a young boy. And when I see people who claim to have been in the faith for 10, 15 years, do otherwise, I'm wondering what. Can, can somebody be that, I'm sorry, but can somebody be that dumb in the spirit? That you can't sense, can't discern what to do and what not to do at a point like this. You take a bad position. You pray. You are fasting to your prayer. For some, it may even require you taking a break from unnecessary socialization. Why? Because at that point in time, you see, as you are praying, the next thing that is happening is that God is speaking. And he's not necessarily speaking, my son, my son, my son from heaven. No, he's giving you impressions in your spirit. And you need to be sensitive. He's giving you impressions. And so if you, are, if you are receiving impressions like that, and then you are also engaged in all your socialization, you, can't, you may not sense it. You may not be able to pick the signal. Because there will be so many signals interfering. So, so it may be a time for you to cut down on your socialization. Why? Something, something more important and critical is at stake. Because there are some things, if you miss it, it will take another several years for it to come back. Ah, doko paso kotande granita. Joko sodom. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. And there are also scriptures and examples in the scripture to buttress it. Moses missed the timing. It took him 40 years to get back. Thank God, God gave him 120 years to leave. Otherwise, you will have died, get to heaven. You missed your assignment, Moses. But how many people will live for 120 years? In fact, how many people will still be strong at 80 and say, God, now say at 80, you are now ready for my assignment. Can you imagine? You want to be in that position. You're at 80. Ah, the way I'm seeing you, it seems like it's time. You see, that business I made you for, I made you for a business to take over a sector at 80, I think you are now ready. How are you going to even, you know, how will you be able to sign paper when so you don't have all that time, that's what I'm saying. 
And, and what I'm saying cuts across different areas. Sometimes it cuts across. Sometimes it's about relationship. God is about to bring you. It could be marital. It could be business connection. You ah, Learn to be sensitive. I don't know how else to say it. Learn to be discerning. Learn to be discerning. There are times you just, you know, if you are in tune with God, you just know that there's something about this period. Something about this period. And this is not a time to be careless. But, but sadly, because some people are insensitive, they may sense it, but they just go about, you know, ah, gada, eh, gada. They just go about their normal business, just, you know, hey, <laughs> Israel, how far now? Bah. Hey, Pastor Rich. They are drifting away. And then tomorrow they are the ones that will come back and say, Pastor, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not supposed to be where I am. It's true. But I'm not the cause. It's true. You are not sensitive. You are not sensitive. Glory to Jesus. So, what do you do? You pray. And in some cases, add fasting to the prayer. Glory to Jesus. You worship. And then you stay in the word too. Because sometimes, sometimes it is why you are reading the scripture that a word will jump out. And that will be the instruction that God gives you concerning the next move to make. And you make that next move. Bah. Something happens. And people say overnight success. No, it's not overnight success. It's when preparation has finally met opportunity. I, 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 time won't permit me to get to that point. But you find you find Ahab telling no, you find Elijah telling Ahab to go and prepare. Prepare. Um, I'm going to stop here right away because of time. But I've just scratched the surface of what I thought I'd be able to deliver this morning. But I think that it's probably the essence of this particular service. There's somebody here who needed to hear this. Run with it. It's your time. It's your season. It's your turn. There's something you need to bring forth. There's something, there's something that, that you are pregnant of. You may not even have an idea of it. It's in the womb of your spirit. Please don't be careless. Don't be careless. Don't be careless. Don't be careless. Generations will be impacted by it. Don't be careless. Don't be careless. Don't be careless. Don't be careless. Lay a cut that brownie stand to your feet.